listening to Worth Electronics' What's Up, a radio podcast where each week we are seeing what's up in the world of electronics and PCB design. We'll be checking in with leading industry experts and our very own Worth Electronics specialists who are going to shine a light on our topics, such as energy harvesting, wireless power transfer, EMI issues, and so much more. Tune in to get technical design tips and applications during your commute, at your desk, or wherever you might be with Worth Electronics' What's Up podcast. In our introduction, we always mention that we are checking in with leading industry experts and Worth Electronic technical specialists, and today, that is exactly what we are doing. This podcast comes from a joint webinar with Worth Electronic and on semi regarding 25 kilowatt bi-directional fast DC charging. Our first speaker will present the basic block diagram for building a 25 kilowatt DC fast charger and the design for building a complete system along with specifications and on semi components used to build the charger. In the next section, the second presenter will discuss power chokes specifically designed for use in active PFC circuits. So in combination with the active boost PFC circuits, these chokes achieve high efficiency and a power factor between 0.90 and 0.99. The Wii AGDT series from Worth Electronic actually makes it easier than ever to implement discrete SICK gate driver designs. These off-the-shelf components are compact surface mount transformers that have been optimized for silicon carbide applications. With extremely low inner winding capacitance, the Wii AGDT helps achieve higher common mode transient immunity, or CMTI. And then finally, we'll talk about the characteristics of DC link capacitors placed between a DC source and a power stage, such as an inverter or a motor drive, and this helps to provide temporary buffer of energy. We'll also discuss the advantages of the Worth Electronic polypropylene film DC link capacitors. So I will start with this, uh, with uh, normally... A short introduction about myself. I'm Didier Baloco. I have an, engin- an engineering degree from the Electro- Ecole Ele- Nationale Supérieure d'Electronic de Radio Electricité de Bordeaux in France in 92 and a PhD in degree in power electronics in the same university of Bordeaux in 97. Then I joined a company in telecom in, in France to do uh, some research about DC-DC, AC-DC, and DC-AC converter. Very applied research from in a range of uh, 1 watt to 150 kilowatt, and I did that until 2014. Then I became a FAE for uh, Fairchild, supporting South of France and Spain and Portugal. And with the merge in 2016 between Fairchild and Onsumai, I joined Onsumai, and in 2018, I take the opportunity to move as a business marketing engineer, supporting EMEA for industrial application. So let's start the session today with this 25 fast EV charging and reference design using silicon carbide module. So I will do a quick introduction, review the key building blocks like the six pack and the NPC, the DCDC, dual active bridge, LLC, and so on. Then we will do a 25 kilowatt building block review. I will explain you why we decided to use module and uh, identify all pocket or uh, part that you can get from on my portfolio. I will leave to vote to identify their products in that application. I will show you some measurement and result and then conclude my talk. So let's start with the building blocks that you have available to uh, make such a uh, high power stage. You can see here, I divide the screen in the upper level where you have the three phase active front end, the six pack books, TNPC, NPC boost, or Vienna topology. And on the lower part of the slide, the isolated DC-DC that can be also NPC based or neutral plant based all bridge or full bridges. There's the dual active bridge topology that's very interesting because it's bi-directional. And the LLC or CLLC and for the LLC, CLLC or dual active bridge, depending on the voltage, you can stack those topology to handle higher uh, input output voltage. 
for uh, those uh, various solutions, for example, the Vienna or the six pack converter as shown here, we can use either module or discrete uh, silicon carbide diode and silicon carbide MOSFET. And for each topology, we have module with dedicated layout for that topology. The same go with the bidirectional TNPC version. We have either a module or discrete diode and, and MOSFET available and um, they can be used directly. For the DC-DC isolated stage, this is the same. We are mainly here using two-pack or four-pack uh, module or discrete also diode and MOSFET can be used depend on the, on the voltage and the, um, the current. So in our 25 uh, kilowatt application, we have those two uh, power blocks that we can see on the upper of this uh, block diagram. We have the ACDC three phase uh, two level uh, boost and the DC DC bridge on the top. And all the orange block, it's block where on semi can provide you components. We have the uh, voltage sensor, current sensor, uh, gate drive, isolation, EEPROM, connectivity, and also the auxiliary supply and the ground fault protection. All of that can be found inside on semi portfolio. To build a fast DC charger, we use block and block from 12 to 75 kilowatts. And here we have chosen to make a 25 kilowatt block. And we parallel those blocks to get 100, 200 or 300 kilowatts. On top of that block, when we stack them, we connect them from, uh, they have the same input and share the same output. And to uh, manage them, we have a, a user interface with connectivity and controller that will dialogue with the car and with the block to uh, set the output power or the output voltage that the battery in the car need. So uh, the complete charger has been made to be compatible with the European or the US line, 400 or 480 volt AC, maximum input current 40 amp, accommodate with the 60 or 50 Hertz, grid and the output voltage will be in the range of 200 volt and 1000 volt with a maximum output of 50 amp. We have integrated all the protection of the voltage over current and the voltage uh, DSAT on the driver. Uh, we have many interface also for connectivity like SPI, A2C, UART, USB. We limit the operating range from 0 to 40 amp and we're willing to make a full bidirectional device. The other parameters are uh, here as a guideline. So we divide the, the building block in two boards. One is the six pack boost ACDC and the second one is the dual active rate DCDC to be fully bidirectional. And you can see here the uh, 3D view of the, of the boards. For the output, output characteristic, I told you we are in the range from 200 to 1000 volt and with a maximum of 50 amp and a maximum power of 25 kilowatt. That means that below 500 watt, 500 volts, sorry, we will operate at constant output power with uh, 25 kilowatt and the current will uh, the, no, the, at below 500 volt, the output current will be constant and we will operate with uh, an output current of about 25, 26 amp. And then above 500 volt, we will operate with constant power, 25 kilowatt, and uh, we'll, we'll get to that point. So the products available inside on semi portfolio, they are pointed here. You can see we have uh, the, um, the, in, the inrush control with, uh, with MOSFET. We have uh, um, the voltage sensor, the three um, module for the three half bridges, the uh, gate drivers, the auxiliary supply, and we use a common control board that has been developed for motor control. Here you have the list of those devices and uh, you can see the 10 milliohm 1200 volt module on top 
and the NCD5700 as a get driver. You have the list of the voltage amplifier, current amplifier, and so on, the digital isolator. And for the auxiliary supply, we use two boards, one board for the high voltage to medium voltage, 15 volt conversion, and then from 15 volt to the various uh, voltage needed, we use a special board to drive, to get the 20 and minus five volts for the get driver. The DC-DC block is almost the same, except we have less module. We have reused most of the devices used for the PFC with the same control board, the same auxiliary board, the same op-amp, the same get driver, the same isolation, uh, isolation barrier. So we found almost the same part list on the bottom, except on the top, the number of module has been reduced and, the, and so the number of get driver is not the same because we don't have the same number of components. So why using module? Uh, first of all, because module, we can carry much more power. And with module, uh, you see that uh, using F1 size, for example, we can scale the power from 6 to 25 kilowatt and using F2, the big one, we can go to 50 kilowatt and uh, up to 75 kilowatt with this module. Get driver, we use the NCD5730, that is an isolated get driver that offers very good propagation delay below 15 nanoseconds and very good delay matching also lower than 10 nanoseconds. He has a low output impedance. Uh, drive capability from 4 to uh, amp and minus 6 amp sync, 25 uh, volt output range, that's very good for uh, silicon carbide, very good voltage immunity, 100 volt per nanosecond, minor clap, DSAT function, and uh, an isolation capability of 5 kilovolt RMS and 8 millimeter cleavage. This part, we have released now the 57100, that is the same pinout, same features, except we have extended the uh, VDD minus VEE range up to 32 volt to be even more compatible with silicon carbide. And we have included a DSAT uh, diagnostic function that uh, we have a patent pending. The auxiliary supply socket is made with, uh, is, we use three auxiliary supply, one for the, the AC-DC and two for the DC-DC, one on the primary side, one on the secondary side, because if we start operate the product reverse, we need on the secondary side an, an auxiliary supply that will start and give the information to the primary side because we are operating a reverse. Those high voltage board, 40 watt, uh, 15 volt out are made, as you see, it's a simple flyback schematic with uh, a silicon, sorry for that. With a silicon uh, driver that normally drives silicon MOSFET, but here we drive the silicon carbide directly, even if it's not optimum in terms of gate voltage, but that's enough for uh, 40 watt. The full power list of this bond is available on this slide, and you can see that for 1,000 volt input, one and 100 volt reflected voltage, we have uh, with 1,200 volt volt set MOSFET, we have only 100 volt uh, headroom. But if you use the new 17 uh, volt one ohm silicon carbide MOSFET, you can get much more headroom and much uh, more balance uh, transformer ratio. Amplifier for voltage and current, we have a schematic that we can provide you for voltage and, and current sensing that has been proven in our lab and we have reused those schematics for voltage sensing based on the NCS333 series and for current sensing based on the NCS210 series that is already integrated the voltage, the, the resistor for the the voltage amplifier and they are matched. And in this way, we can get very accurate gain and very uh, high um, signal uh, differential mode ratio rejection. We have the same schematic also for LEM sensor based on, on the voltage amplifier, the NCS333. 
measurement and result now uh, for avoiding losing all the power we made a loop testing meaning that uh, the uh, output voltage is fed back to the input and so to the grid and then so recycle inside this loop and the grid only need to produce the energy for the losses inside the loop and in this way to test the 25 kilowatt system we only need 1.5 kilowatt that correspond to 500 watt per board losses uh, around at full power um, in full power mode and it's all low us to test also the bidirectionality of the devices here we have the input voltage and current you can see that uh, on the the right side the when the voltage and current are on the same scale they are almost impossible to determine which one is which meaning that we have a very good power factor and very low THD. Here this is the efficiency of the ACDC, the active front end. Our goal was to have an efficiency above 98% at full power, 25 kilowatt. We are around 98.2 uh, at uh, maximum input voltage and maximum power. The dual active bridge uh, also reached 98%. You can see here, depending on the input and output voltage, we are above or very close to 98%. Sure, having lower uh, input and output voltage makes uh, things more complicated in terms of uh, for the efficiency. Some people say that this side function is not needed for uh, silicon carbide. And here we had, uh, as we use an IGBT driver, we had the function and uh, we could use the DSAT function as a protection. And as you can see on those uh, graphs here, the DSAT function is working properly and can be uh, set for silicon carbide also. As a conclusion, uh, various high power topologies can be used for fast EV charger. For that power level, modules are the best way to go. We have more than uh, 20 blocks that we can address with our on semi portfolio. We have the, the module of sure, for sure, the get driver, the, the voltage and current uh, operational amplifier, the isolator for a digital signal, the auxiliary supply that includes many parameters and the communication interface also. If you need more information about this topic, you have a dedicated landing page uh, that uh, we create uh, during the development of this 25 kilowatt SIC based fast DC charger. And you have also a dedicated uh, EV charging landing page. You have the two links on this slide. Hello, everyone, and welcome from my side as well. My name is Octavian Stroh. I'm a product definition engineer for Virt Electronic and I'm supporting the entire Eastern Europe. As a product definition engineer, my main job is to support application engineer from different IC houses or IC manufacturers, however you want to call them, who are working on reference designs, demo boards, evaluation boards, in choosing the right component for their design. Also, I'm, also, I'm supporting with layout reviews, schematic reviews, and I can help application engineers to design filters for passing the electromagnetic compatibility tests. As a background, my experience is in power and audio electronics, design and testing, high voltage, high current, buck POL converters, PCB layout design, 3D design. And since 2022, since April to be more precise, I'm a product definition engineer at Virt Electronic. Today on the agenda, we're going to discuss about two main topics. We're going to talk about the auxiliary gate drive transformers and the flat wire power fraction correction choke with examples of how they were integrated in on semi 25 kilowatts ultra fast charger. And I'm going to give you also an overview of the different part numbers and the main characteristics of those parts. And I will also be diving into a bit of more important technical aspects, so to say, regarding the use of our auxiliary gate drive transformers and the technical considerations behind why we chose to go with a flat wire for our PFC chokes. So, first of all, I will start by introducing our extended 
we AGDT, this, that, this stands for Auxiliary Gate Drive Transformers. The we AGDT series is specifically designed to provide ultra low interwinding capacitance and rugged isolation for um, implementing isolated auxiliary power supplies that drive the gate driving ICs. Uh, those parts feature wide input voltages, so from 6 to 36 volts. In this case, up to 6 watts of power, which can be extended up to 10 watts with an EP10 package. And they also feature very important ultra-low interwinding capacitance down to 3, 1 picofarads, which help with the common mode transient immunity, and it can also help with uh, EMI performance. It's also uh, worth noting and specifying that our parts are AECQ200 qualified. Currently, we have extended the series with uh, eight different parts. Now we have a total of, if I remember correctly, 14 part numbers, which are all available on our, uh, in our online catalog. There's absolutely no minimum order quantity. If you want to get some samples to try them out, you can even order one, so that's fine. And they're also available in our online simulation platform called uh, Red Expert, where you can find different uh, reference designs with these parts. Here we have the 25 kilowatts reference design, ultra fast charger reference design from OnSemi. We have the three phase uh, rectifier and power factor correction, and we have the dual active bridge converter. Now, for the PFC stage, we have 10 uh, instances of the SECO LVDCDC uh, evaluation board, which contains our AGDT, auxiliary gate drive transformers. The output voltage, voltages actually, for this evaluation boards are plus 20 volts, uh, plus 5 and minus 5 volts. Out of these 10 boards, uh, 6 are used to drive the, uh, to power the stick gate driving ICs. And the rest of them are used for isolation to, to power the ADCs and isolate the uh, ADCs that measure the current and voltage and also to power the uh, ICs that take care of the lock uh, communication and uh, CAN communication. For the dual active bridge, the, um, there are 12 instances where, this, uh, where these boards are used. Eight of these auxiliary gate drive transformer are used in the primary and the secondary side. So we have four in the primary, four in the secondary side uh, for the um, to, to power up the ICs that drive the, uh, the gates of the SICK devices. And the rest of uh, four boards are used to isolate the ADC interfaces that take care of the current and voltage measurements in the primary side and the secondary side, and also to power the ICs used for communication. So this is where the uh, parts are used, as I mentioned. So six in the primary, uh, six in on the on the PFC board, and then twelve totaling in the uh, dual active bridge. Next one. So a bit about the gate drive transformers. Uh, we have applications like silicon carbide or gallium nitride, like high voltage semiconductor, basically, that under hard switching operation we need galvanic isolation, which is a common requirement for safety and functional reasons. Uh, and also, depending on the application, it might require basic or reinforced isolation. Now, we have operating voltage, insulation material, we have pollution degree, and also different applicable regulatory standards that set the minimum creepage and clearance distances as well as the uh, required the electric voltage requirements. And this affects the um, components we can use for this across this isolation barrier. Um, the isolated gate drive IC and the transformers, both of them bridge this isolation barrier, thus having to meet a very stringent safety and functional requirements. We know that each a uh, thick silicon carbide or gallium nitride fed would require independent gate driving stages with their own isolated auxiliary supplies. 
this not only enables to individually control each of the device, but it also helps to create, to keep the gate current loop small and local, so small and local to the device itself, minimizing the adverse effects of the parasitic loop inductances and ground balance, which can cause very high D, uh, DI over DTs, and which can, in, uh, in consequence, turn, uh, mm, cause EM, EMC problems. With the auxiliary gate drive transformers, we're able to uh, build two different kinds of supplies. We can have isolated supplies, bipolar or unipolar. Uh, if the silicon carbide device requires a negative voltage, the typical auxiliary power supply will look like the one in the figure here. So it will be a bipolar one because it will require a negative voltage as well to turn the, to, um, to, uh, turn the uh, silicon carbide off. It's also important to notice the fact that some silicon carbide devices, they feature an additional Kelvin pin for the source terminal as shown in this image here. This connection provides a dedicated gate source path for the gate drive current, which is not shared with the current in the power loop. So from drive, from, uh, yeah. Next one. Also a typical application is uh, unipolar auxiliary power supplies. This can be used for uh, devices or power modules that do not require a negative voltage and therefore, we have different Wii AGDT part numbers with only one secondary for implementing a unipolar auxiliary power supplies. We have the same type of Kelvin connection approach, which should be used in this instance as well. We should be connected as shown in the image. Now, I mentioned before low interwinding capacitance and why it does matter. We have something called CMTI. CMTI is an acronym that stands for Common Mode Transient Immunity. This is usually measured either in kilovolts for, uh, per, uh, per microsecond or in volts per nanosecond. And this is an indication of the maximum rate of change of voltage, dV over dt, which can be tolerated across this, across this isolation barrier. And this is the maximum voltage that can be tolerated before malfunction can occur, causing loss of the control of the sick device and very erratic behavior of the whole system. So this CMTI, Common Mode Transient Immunity Rating, directly depends on the parasitic capacitance value that we have across this isolation barrier. And to this parasitic capacitance, we have two contributors. We have the isolated IC and we have the AGDT transformer. Now, I'd like to introduce to you our newest series, the Wii Tor PFC. The design of this uh, series started almost at the same time as the development of the 25 kilowatts ultra fast charger. And it was tuned and specified in accordance to the needs of such a demanding application. Uh, from this, more part numbers were derived and we now have a total of 17 parts in stock which will be released, as far as I know, in the middle of May. Also, there is no minimum order quantity required for this part. Um, for this design, we have chosen flat wire for the windings because we wanted to target the efficiencies associated with the high current and high switching speeds. Also, we chose them from uh, mechanical standpoints because flat wire is more rugged considering the size and the weight of, of, of such a uh, choke. This table shows an overview of all of the part numbers that will be released soon, along with the typical inductance values, DCR, we have rated current and saturation current. Please know that due to the winding style of the, uh, of the, of the flat wire, there are some gap between the turns, which allows us to have higher currents with air cooling. That's why we also specify the rated current at different values of air cooling. Here we have again the uh, 25 kilowatts ultra fast charger, this time only the uh, PFC stage because this is where our 
part numbers are used. We have three part numbers used here. The value of the inductance is 100 and almost 180 microhenries with a saturation current of 105 amps. It's a three phase input. So three power factor equation chokes are used. Please note that the parts shown in the image here are not are just the initial samples that were sent to the application engineer for validation purposes and for prototyping. And the final version of the series will not be featuring flying leads, but direct through hole mounting and a central screw for mechanical stability. Also, this direct connection helps with optimizing the EMC. Here is the uh, block diagram, again, to help localize the position of the th uh, three power factor correction chokes. And now, a bit of theory to help us understand at the end why we chose to go with flat wire, because that is the most interesting part. So we're gonna talk a bit about skin effect. So what is skin effect? It represents the tendency of uh, the density of the current density in alternating current to become distributed towards the surface or the skin of a conductor. So therefore, with higher switching frequencies, the more the current density will be pushed towards the surface. Or we can say that the higher switching frequency is, the less of the conductor's cross section is used to carry the current. This is shown in the image here for different frequencies. So depending on the frequency, the higher we go in frequencies, the less we use from the conductor. This creates uh, increased AC resistance. And this, is, this happens because we can see in the image to the right, as the current passes through the conductor, it generates a magnetic field, H, that induces circulating eddy currents inside the conductor. Now, if you look closely, at the direction of these eddy currents, you'll notice that they cancel some of the main current that pass through the conductor, through the center of the conductor, and reinforces the current to the sides, so to the skin, close to the uh, outer surface. Now, a bit about the proximity effect. The easiest way to visualize it and explain it, to, uh, we have in this image two conductors, running in parallel, the both are carrying alternating current. Those currents pass through the conductors that, uh, because they're alternating currents, they will generate a time varying magnetic field. Again, this magnetic field will induce circulating eddy currents from one conductor to the other. Those eddy currents, as they are induced, they will increase the current density to the sides and decrease it to the, uh, to the sides closest to each other. So on the opposite sides, we will have increased current, and on the sides closest to each other, we'll have decreased current. This happens if the two conductors are carrying alternating current in the same direction. If they carry it in opposite direction, the concentration of the current will happen on the surfaces closest to each other, so here. This again, it will uh, create the same think as the skin effect. So it will increase the AC resistance and we will see a higher increase in AC resistance as we go with higher frequencies. Now, to test uh, some of our theories, we, uh, we created two samples. So we selected a standard flat wire part number, the image on the right. And what we did, we used the same core and we wound um, we wound with a round wire to create the same inductance. We chose the wire gauge to be, so that it can handle the same amount of current as the flat wire, uh, in such a way that it also creates a, a, similar, a similar DCR. Now, from the measurements, we noticed two things. We have 27.7 milliohms for the round wire of DCR and 27.1 milliohms for the flat wire. It's just a tiny, you might call it, 0.6 million difference in DCR, but where the biggest difference is, is in the interwinding capacitance. 154 picofarads for the uh, round wire inductor sample and only three picofarads 
for the flat core for the flat wire sample. Now, with a round wire, the windings in most cases will be done with different numbers of layers. Looking at the two images, we can immediately expect some problems, and here as well. So we can clearly see that with more than one layer, will be they will have parasitic capacitance between wires in different layers, and also between wires in the same layer in the horizontal axis. This will form series and parallel parasitic capacitances, which will create a higher value of parasitic capacitance. Compared to the one below, which represents the flat wire windings, which we can see that there are only series connected uh, parasitic capacitances. What it means that in the end, the total parasitic capacitances will be smaller because they are series connected. So just to give you an idea, let's say we take those two, um, uh, those two samples that we built, they're around 200 microhenries of uh, inductance. And let's go with the 150 picofarads of uh, parasitic capacitance for the round wire. If you would calculate it, this means that the self resonance of this inductor right here is one megahertz. Now with the flat wire, we are down to three picofarads. Down to three picofarads, if you calculate it, the resonant point will be around 6.5 megahertz. So the higher the resonance, it means that we'll have a wider frequency spectrum where the part is acting like an inductor, because as with any inductor actually, after the resonance points, we go into the capacitive region. So therefore with higher resonant frequencies, we are able to operate the inductor also at higher switching frequencies. Continuing with information extraction from our measurements, we will now have a look at the temperature increase between the round wire sample and the flat wire sample. With just 15 amps of current, we can already notice a difference of 14 kelvins. Remember that we had 0.6 milliohms difference in the DCR, but this will not create by itself that huge difference. Where the temperature difference is coming from actually is from the better heat dissipation capabilities of the flat wire due to in the increased surface area. Of course, let's say we take uh, one of our part numbers which has a saturation current of 105 amps and you put a peak current of 105 amps through that one, the temperature difference will be much higher because we will also gain contribution from the increased power losses. We also ran a um, AC resistant measurement to compare the two different samples, the one with the round wire and the one with the flat wire. And we can see that there's not a huge difference up to 250 kilohertz of switching frequency. And it shows kind of a linear increase. After 250 kilohertz, when the skin and the proximity effects start to be dominant, we can see there is a clear difference between the flat, round, the flat wire and the round wire, with the round wire showing almost an exponential increase in the AC resistance. We can see that the maximum differences in AC resistance is, so we have eight ohms for the flat wire and 22 ohms for the round wire. So, still wondering why a flat wire? Well, we have lower DC losses because we have a lower DC resistance. We can reduce the skin and we can reduce the proximity effects. Therefore, we reduce the AC losses. Also with the flat wire style, we also achieve lower interwinding uh, capacitance, which allows for a higher switching frequency. Also, with a flat wire, we have better mechanical stability. Therefore, we increase the ruggedness of the coil's mounting system. Now, the image on the right represents a real equivalent circuit of an inductor. So we have our R1, which is the DC resistance, which we lowered, so that's a tick. We have our capacitive region, 
we have our inductive region right here and we have our resonant region. We will set aside the resonant region for now and only focus on the capacitive and the inductive region. As you can see, these are in parallel and reducing the magnitude of certain elements in here will have a big impact in the efficiency and the performance of our choke. So we have R2, which is our AC resistance, which we have lowered. And with a decrease in, we have lowered with a decrease in uh, skin and proximity effect. Now, the lower the interwinding capacitance means we are reducing C1 here. And this moves our capacitive regions of the choke to higher frequencies. So every box is ticked, which means the flat wire is a clear winner. Welcome. Uh, thanks, Octavian, from, from my side. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be... I'm going to try to be uh, uh, fast and quick, um, and then maybe we'll have more time for questions. Um, so, um, a couple of words about me. Uh, my name is John uh, Itzque Rodriguez, and I have been working in the capacitor division uh, of Virt Electronics for more than four years, and I take care of uh, yeah of some technical aspects uh, regarding the applications and the use of capacitors in general um, as well as measurements and simulation and red expert let me check one okay yep so in this presentation um, I will uh, briefly present the the new vcat uh, FTDB family of uh, DC link film capacitors. And yeah, since the presentation is, uh, is very short, there's no point in explaining the agenda. So uh, let's go. Uh, we'll start, uh, yeah, introducing the capacitors. So we released this family in November uh, last year, but of course we have been working on these components for a long time. Um, the VCAP FTTV series um, are, specially designed for DC link applications. So uh, you can find them already in our online catalog and, uh, and also in Red Expert. Um, we have 24 standard parts um, in the catalog, which are always uh, available from our central warehouse uh, from stock. And we have rated voltages from 500 volt to uh, 1.2 kilovolt and capacitance between one and 75 microfarad. So the term um, NKP, uh, which uh, was uh, part of the series, uh, means that the capacitor uh, is made with metallized polypropylene film. So this is the plastic film um, acting, acting as a dielectric and um, we can deposit or met, uh, with one metallization in a, in a site. Uh, a thin layer of aluminum is deposited uh, on one side of, of the uh, dielectric and we form the electrode. So two films like this are rolled together and we create this kind of capacitors. So polypropylene materials um, provide very stable capacitance characteristics um, as well as very long life and self-healing properties against the holes that uh, um, are created um, in size of the dielectric uh, when you have a surge voltage. So the capacitors um, in this series uh, are quite big and most of them have poor terminals for a better, better mechanical ruggedness as well as current capa capabilities. So um, here we have the reference design from Amsemi again. Um, since we were involved with at the design phase of the project, um, we could offer the capacitors that best fulfill their needs. In this case, for the PFC output, uh, we have a 800 volt bus. Um, so they selected a capacitor with 75 microfarad and 900 volt uh, of rated voltage. And uh, they placed one capacitor in the output of each uh, PFC power stage leg. So three in total, and uh, we have uh, the same capacitor uh, two times in parallel at the primary side of the converter, which is the same bus. Uh, we can consider uh, that all of these 
uh, five parts for, from form together the DC link capacitance, hitting one power stage and the other. So finally, at the secondary side of the DC DC converter, we have two capacitors of uh, 50 microfarad and a rated voltage of 1.1 kilovolt. So these ones uh, are there to allow the maximum output voltage uh, of the full system, which is uh, 900 volt. So um, if we look at the block diagram, uh, we have uh, the five capacitors uh, rated for 900 volt uh, here. And on both sides of the this same DC link connection, as I said, and uh, in the secondary side, we have the two capacitors, which in theory are connected to the battery. Um, so of course, um, DC link only means the placement of the capacitors. So now in theory, we, ca we can be using any type of capacitor here, but with the amount of power handled by, by this application, um, we can only consider either film capacitors or aluminum electrolytic capacitors. So both technologies are valid and uh, each case it must, must be um, carefully considered because we have advantage and disadvantages. So uh, in, it's a complicated comparison, so let's, uh, let's see carefully. So um, of course, the rated voltage is a huge factor. So here we can use the advantage of the silicon carbide module and in this application, no single, no single electrolytic cells um, are able to work with this high voltage. So a series connection of uh, ECAPs is possible, uh, but of course it will increase the part count and complexity because uh, some balancing uh, may be required. So due to the um, very low ESR, uh, polypropylene, polypropylene film capacitors can handle a, a very large ripple current. So in comparison with relatively um, high series resistance um, of the electrolytic caps. So on the other hand, for the same size, electrolytic capacitor cells offer um, or provide much, many times higher capacitance in the same volume. So either you have uh, yeah, capacitance or current capability. So the consequence of this um, is that we really need uh, a low ripple voltage on that DC bus. If we really need the low ripple voltage, uh, we might not get enough capacitance by adding uh, film capacitors. So we might need to use electrolytic capacitors. Um, finally, let me remind you that um, the ECAPs have a liquid electrolyte that will dry with time and the lifetime is heavily dependent on temperature. So another advantage of film capacitors is that the lifetime both uh, on load and on storage is, uh, is very long, even at high operating temperature. <clears throat> now, um, let me look into detail of the specification um, of the ripple current limitation, which I mentioned before. So this is a capture of the data sheet of the same capacitor I mentioned before, um, the, the um, 75 microfarad 900 volt. And I'm, you can see market the ripple current specification. So um, in the data sheet, we have written that we defined the electrical properties at 20 degrees. Um, so as uh, laboratory conditions. But in operation, there is ripple current and due to ESR, uh, the ripple current will create some self-heating uh, and we have to limit this self-heating to a maximum of 15 degree. So um, if, if you look again, uh, we have 70 degrees um, as, uh, as in the definition of maximum ripple current of 25 amps. Uh, RMS. So we expect a self-heating of 15 degrees. And with it, we, we will arrive at uh, the 85 degrees Celsius where the rest of the parameters are varied. As I said before, um, for temperatures higher than 85 degrees, um, 
some specification will change. So you can see this, uh, these graphs um, in the in the data sheet for clarification. And um, you can see here, for example, in the left, the voltage rating applies up to 85 degrees Celsius. And then in the right, you can see the current rating applies up to 70 degrees. So um, to take into account that self-heating at maximum river current. So by now, um, yeah, I, my colleague already spoke about Red Expert, and I just want to remind you, um, we also have a module about DC link capacitors. Um, we offer a detailed uh, grid table to filter and compare between the different parts of uh, the series. Uh, as well as uh, we offer a range of measurements like the impedance versus frequency, ESR versus frequency, or also very interesting, the temperature dependency of um, capacitance and also dissipation factor. So um, yeah, before I finish, I want to remind you that the catalog is just a starting point. As I said before, we have 24 part numbers in the online catalog and these parts can be ordered at any quantity because we have stock. Uh, we have them in stock. Also, um, yeah, we offer free samples as well as uh, measurements of uh, in the expert and libraries for for um, CAD program and simulation programs. But these capacitors are quite big, so um, we understand that uh, it is essential that the parts suit your application uh, perfectly. So um, for this aspect, we uh, for the different demands, we offer additional components as customer specific solution, which um, which means that uh, the orders must be above the MOQ, so a minimal order of quantity. So we, um, it's not a huge quantity, but um, this is um, parts that we don't have in stock. So this is a short summary of the general limitation of what we offer. Um, so since we don't have a stock of these parts, we can only provide measurements and other support after we, after we produce um, the order um, quantity. And finally, um, for the designing process, uh, we have provided uh, in the past some special testing uh, testing parts, like what you can see in, the, in this image, which has uh, two thermocouple uh, temperature sensors um, inside of the package. So if you need something like this and you think it's doable, um, uh, don't hesitate and ask your sales contact person or the capacitor team directly um, at this address that you can see in the screen, which is a cap um, hotline at VE online. Yeah, we dash online dot de. So finally, um, I want to direct you to some other resources that you can you can have in case you want to know more about this topic. Of course, um, you have an email to ask any question you might have about capacitors. Of course. <laughs> so regarding. Um, this topic of DC link capacitors, I made a longer webinar last year with the title DC link uh, capacitors specification and application. So you can find the recording in, in YouTube and it lasts about 40 minutes and I go into detail about the specifications and also I do a longer comparison in one specific case for, for the uh, alternative electrolytic capacitor or DC link. Um, solution. Um, since you, we are already talking about polypropylene film capacitors, um, another webinar from last year I talked about harsh conditions and especially uh, film capacitors which are quite sensitive to the air humidity which can be critical um, in combination with high temperature condition. You can find the entire line of worth electronic capacitors, transformers, chokes, and also electromechanical components available at Worth Electronic Online. And for any questions, any time of day, click the chat icon to talk with a live team member.
You're listening to Worth Electronics What's Up Radio Podcast, where each week we are seeing what's up in the world of electronics and PCB design. We'll be checking in with leading industry experts and Worth Electronic technical specialists who are going to shine a light on our topics like energy harvesting, wireless power transfer, EMI issues, and so much more. Tune in to get technical design tips and applications during your commute at your desk or wherever you might be with the Worth Electronics What's Up podcast.